Hey everybody, and welcome back to another episode of How to Play Minecraft Survival with me, Throwlash. Now today, we're going to go over some great ways to farm experience in your Minecraft world. Uh, there are a ton, and I mean a metric ton, of ways to get experience in this game. Uh, you can fight mobs, you can breed animals, you can uh, cook things in a furnace. We're going to go over a bunch of great ways to do it in survival, especially early game, okay? So just sit tight and enjoy the show. But before we do that, I filled in a hole over here, right, with some dirt, and it is growing rapidly into grass. Now, grass will spread onto a dirt block if it is adjacent to it, um, and there was technically grass under the snow here. So I could just lay down some dirt, and then the grass would just spread naturally, right? But I also want this snow layer here. Now, in order to get snow layers, you need an enchantment on a shovel called silk touch right and i don't have one of those um so what we're going to do is we're going to build ourselves a snowman right so we're going to grab two pieces of snow block which is four snowballs so if you dig up eight pieces of uh this snow layer here right and create snow blocks we're going to put a pumpkin on its head and it's not really going to do much until we make some shears right just two pieces of iron ingot one in each corner and then we're going to walk up to this here and right click on it and we get ourselves a snow golem, right? And what he's going to do is he's going to walk around and, and go exactly where I don't want him to. <laughs> um, and everywhere he walks, if there's not a snow layer, it will create a snow layer, right? So if he walks over here to those piggies and tries to go on... I'll try and see if I can push him and nudge him. No, nope, he's got a mind of his own. Um, and try to go on like this block or this block, he would create a snow layer. Now the problem with that is the torch would just melt it. <laughs> a couple of things about snow golems. Uh, really great for creating snow layers. Like I said, you can actually lock them in place and just like use a silk touch shovel or a regular shovel to get a bunch of snowball snowballs or snow layers. Um, golems will actually uh, throw snowballs at um, bad mobs, right? And they don't do any damage. It's just absolutely hilarious to watch. <laughs> uh, there are some mobs in the nether that they do damage to, like uh, blazes, which are pretty much just made of fire, right? So Snowball would definitely hurt them. And uh, this is not their face. They have another face, right? So this is a, a unlit jack-o'-lantern, right? So if I right-click, that's his face, <laughs> right? So that is a snow golem. Um, he's just going to wander around until, for some reason, he dies. Um, or see, it's not gonna rain, so that shouldn't hurt him. Yeah, snow golems don't like water. Obviously, they don't like heat. Uh, and if I were to kill him, I believe he drops a snowball, but we're gonna keep this guy around as long as possible, and hopefully he fills this area in with snow layers for us. Now I'm gonna go ahead and take that carved pumpkin, and I'm gonna put a torch in the bottom of it to make a jack-o'-lantern, and we're just gonna set this outside. Boop. Oh no! I have absolutely no idea why that happened. That was, that was amazing. Okay, I think I know what just happened here, right? We're gonna make another snow golem. Um, I thought snow golems could only be made if it was two snow blocks on top of each other. And I think I can make a snow golem. <gasps> I can, huh? Look at that, would ya? I never knew that. So what happened is I put that jack-o'-lantern right next to two pieces of snow blocks, right? Uh, right over here. There's one there, and there's an there was another one behind it, and it created a snow golem. His head was in this block here, which is solid, and he died. That was super sad. So anyways, let's uh, let's place this pumpkin down, shear it. I'll go ahead and pick it up and make a jack-o'-lantern. Okay, I think we I think we need to. I think we need to deal with these guys. I've had about four or five of them show up at this point, and I've just avoided them. But I want to show you guys how to get rid of these guys without risking villages. So if you kill this dude with the banner on his back, right, you're going to get an effect called Bad Omen, okay? And that's bad, obviously. It's in the name. So what you want to do is you want to have either A, his buddies kill him, right? Or B, you need to somehow find a way to have something else kill him, like fire or lava, berries um if i had a flint and steel with me i would just 
light a fire under his butt and he would stand into it and just die <laughs> from that. Um, you can have his friends shoot him though. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna provoke these guys. Actually, I'm gonna go in here, get my flint and steel. And flint and steel is just uh, flint and a piece of iron, so it's technically flint and iron. You just put those in a crafting uh, area together, and it sounds like these guys are moving on a little bit. If you get close enough to them, they will cock their crossbows back, and they will start a firing, right? Now, you can just block, and if these two are between, like, one of them is behind another one, he will just shoot him to death. <laughs> the other thing you can do is just light a fire underneath him, and he will burn up in the fire. <laughs> And now you're free to uh, kill the rest of them. Now, if you kill the guy with the banner on his back, he's not going to... Uh, none of the other guys are going to pick up the banner. So it's really just that leader you have to worry about, right? Uh, let me go find the other ones and see if we can't just take them out real quick. Well, now that that rude intrusion has been taken care of, let's talk about some early game XP in Minecraft. By the way, if you ride a boat on ice, it'll go super duper fast. Ready for this? Yum. Boop. <laughs> Unbelievably fast. Anyways, uh, two of the best ways to get XP in the early, early game of Minecraft. Um, one of them is trading with villagers. Now, every time you trade with a villager, you will get an amount of experience. Now, there are a ton of different villager professions that you can make these guys uh, use, I guess. Um, but the one that I find the best is in early game is a fletcher. Now, to make a fletching table, it's a crafting table with two pieces of flint on top of it, okay? And if I grab this and place it down here and let this guy out, he should... There we go. He's got a nice little hat with a feather on it, and he is now a fletcher. If we right-click on him, uh, he will show us his available trades. As you can see, we can trade him some sticks... Uh, and we can uh, for emeralds and we can also trade him some emeralds for some arrows now, I've gone ahead and I've made a few sticks. We're only going to be able to do two of these trades, right? So if I click on the stick trade you see it fills with the most amount of sticks that I can put in here And then I can click on the emerald and we get ourselves a uh, emerald. What a deal and uh, advancement Perfect stuff. Uh, this guy has some levels that go up. We're gonna go very deep into villager trading in future episodes. It's going to take a long time because there's a lot of professions. But now I can take those two emeralds and I can actually buy uh, a half stack of arrows, which is great because we didn't really have a good way of making arrows because arrows are expensive. They're a feather and a stick and a piece of flint. They're really, really expensive. But as you can see down in the hot bar, the entire time that I've been doing this, um, I have been making some, or getting, ex excuse me, getting some experience. Now I'm gonna go ahead and if I hold down shift and click on the emerald, it will trade all of the emeralds that I uh, could have gotten there. And the same here with the arrows. And look at that, we are almost up to level 41. Uh, and this guy just leveled up as well. So now we can buy a nice bow from him. There we go, and I'll go ahead and buy a bow. So now we have a really nice bow here as well, perfect. Um, we're gonna we're gonna leave this guy here and and let him live his best uh, Fletcher villager life um, And I'll show you the other way that we can gain experience and actually we'll talk about it as I'm rowing ourselves back to camp um, Really the best way I find in early game Minecraft besides villagers villagers are the best way they are 100% worth every single bit of time and effort that you put into them um, I kind of abuse villagers and use them too much to the point where the game is almost no longer fun because they feel almost cheaty. They're that good. You can get diamond tools and armor, etc. from villagers on, jeez, uh, day three, four. It's insane. Anyways, uh, I find that the best way early game, if you're not going to be using villagers, is to use what's known as a mob grinder. Now, mob grinders take advantage of mob spawning mechanics. So you build one high up in the sky on uh, the, the mob spawn in a dark room on little platforms. They walk into uh, little water channels and then they drop uh, down a channel to the point where they have a half a heart left. So you just do one swipe of the sword and they all die and you get all the experience and all their drops. And now that is really the biggest point here of why that's the best way to get early game experience is because the drops from the mob grinder are really what you're looking for. You can get a ton of uh, bows, you can get 
bones, which is really great when you uh, need a bunch of bone meal. You can get rotten flesh, which you can then trade with villagers. Uh, strings, sort of, if you build it in a certain way, you can get spiders to spawn in there. Gunpowder is really helpful for TNT and rockets when we, you know, get that far. <laughs> but yes, I find that mob grinders are really honestly the best for early game experience because you not only get the experience, you also get the mob drops as well, which are just super duper hand handy. Now, how do we exploit mob spawning mechanics? Well, mobs will spawn anywhere within 128 blocks of the player. And this is done in a sphere, right? So anywhere, uh, if I stand on this block here, a mob can spawn between, uh, I think it's 23 blocks away from me and up to 120, 128 blocks away in a sphere. So up, top, bottom, all the way in every single direction, 128 blocks away. Mobs, once they get outside of 128 blocks from the player, will immediately despawn. They will cease to exist. Mobs will also not spawn if they are closer than 24 blocks to you. So from you to 24 blocks away, no mobs will spawn, fortunately, because that means you can't get a creeper that just spawns right on top of you, right? Also, mobs need a light level of zero in order to spawn. It needs to be pitch black, and that's brand new in 1.18. Um, it, it used to be seven or less, and now it is zero. So you need to make sure that um, if you want mobs to spawn, it needs to be complete darkness. And the last very important bit of uh, mob spawning mechanics is mobs will wander. Naturally, they will just walk around, just walk from here to there. They'll walk all over the place, right? Uh, the thing about that is, oh, there's an Enderman over there. <laughs> the thing about that is mobs will stop wandering around once they are farther than 32 blocks. So as you can see, these polar bears aren't moving. They're kind of just spinning on the spot. If I got closer to them, they would move around. See how that Enderman whooped a little bit closer to us? Now he is walking around. Now, if I get closer to these polar bears, they will start to walk around, right? As long as their pathfinding uh, tells them that they want to walk around. <laughs> so there's our main criteria for a mob grinder, right? We need something that is within 128 blocks away from us. Uh, we need something that's also within 32 blocks, so that way mobs can move around um, and fall into some water channels to fall down to us. We also need mobs to be uh, able to spawn 24 blocks away from us. We also need that chamber to be light level zero. So throw, what are you doing all the way over here out in the middle of the ocean? Well, I find it best, and so does almost everybody else that plays this game and makes mob grinders, if you go out and you find a very, very, very flat area where mobs cannot spawn, right? The ocean's kind of perfect. <laughs> what we can do, and it also needs to be relatively far enough away from your base to where it's not going to be loaded in all the time when you're walking around because they're obnoxious to look at, right? Uh, but it also needs to be close enough to the point where it's not going to take you an age to get back over to your base, right? Uh, now, this area is a little too far away for us. I might bring it to one of these um, snowy biomes over here. I just want to check to see how close they are to our base. Oh, and by the way, if you see polar bears with cubs, uh, stay away from them because they will attack you and they hit like a truck. I think that right there is our mountain. Um... That's on the other side of our base. Now, I feel like if we potentially built a mob spawner around this area, that wouldn't be a horrendous idea. The only thing I'd be worried about are these big old ice uh, mountains here, these glaciers, because mobs can technically spawn on these. Um, I believe if it was just regular ice, they wouldn't be able to, but because it's a different type of ice, it's considered solid, so they would be able to. So it might just be worth it to uh, go in the middle of that ocean over there. So we are going to go over in the middle of that ocean. We're going to build a big old tower that goes up into the sky, 128 blocks from the top of the ocean, from the top of the water. And then we're going to build a, a little platform there where we stand. And then uh, 24 blocks up from that platform, we're going to build another platform, right? And it's going to have four different things on it, and that's where the mobs are going to uh, spawn. We're going to encase them in blocks, uh, so that way it's always dark in there. And then they're going to walk into water channels. However, we need 
a lot of resources for that. It's going to take us 128 blocks just to get up to our initial spawning platform. And we want that to be, you know, relatively large and safe so we don't fall off of it. Uh, we need chests, so we have storage for uh, all the different items that the mobs drop. And we, oh, we need to not fall down into ravines to our death. <laughs> we also need a new block called a hopper. Now, a hopper is a really nifty block here. You can see it over here in my uh, uh, crafting book. And it costs five iron ingots in this sort of formation and a chest in the center there. And uh, we can go ahead and craft a hopper. Now, a hopper is a directional block. So depending on what you're facing and how you're facing, that's how the hopper is going to face as well. Uh, that'll make more sense once I make another chest here. And we run outside and we place this chest down. Now, what I can do here, right, after a quick snooze there, right? So what I want to do is I want to take this hopper and I want to... Uh, put it on this chest, okay? And what I need to do here is actually hold the shift key as I'm placing this, and I'm gonna place it either, uh, let's do it on the top first, right? So I'll place this hopper on the top. You see, it's kind of like a funnel, okay? Anything that I throw into the top of this is going to go in the hopper and then in the chest, all right? So if I go ahead and open this chest up, look at that, all of our stuff is there. I can break that hopper with a pickaxe and I can do the same thing. I can go on the side and you see the funnel kind of goes off to the chest now, right? So still, if I place this or throw this stuff in here, it's gonna go into the chest. Now, what happens throw when you break the chest? Well, as you can see, things still go into the hopper. It has its own inventory space in here, right? So we can fill up five stacks of stuff inside the hopper. And then we can also push it into um, a chest if we need to, or other storage. You can actually push hoppers into other hoppers, and they'll just bounce items back and forth um, if they are facing each other. So yes, we need some hoppers. We need a ton, a ton, a ton of building blocks. Uh, we also are going to need... Um, we're gonna need some other new blocks called ladders. Now ladders are made with seven sticks, right? Like this, kind of in an H formation. And if you do that, it will give you three ladders. Now ladders do exactly what it sounds like they do. You place them on things and you can climb up the ladder, right? <laughs> so our ladders are gonna be the way that we get from the ocean all the way up to our platform where we're going to swipe at uh, all the mobs that drop down into the channel. Now, normally I do this with cobblestone, right? I build these things with cobblestone. I don't really have a lot of cobble at the moment. Um, and that's because in, in this edition of Minecraft, it's so easy to find things just by caving. I haven't had to do what's known as branch mining, where you just go down to the bottom of the world and you just dig in one direction until you find resources, right? Um, I haven't had to do that because of the nice caves, so I don't have a surplus of cobblestone. I might have to go underground and dig some out. The other thing we can do is, as you see, I've got a whole bunch of saplings over here. We can just um, kind of use our sweet berries and our composter, get a whole bunch of uh, bone meal, and use that on these saplings over here in this formation, and we should be able to make large spruce trees and make the whole thing out of wood. Now, I remember a few episodes back, I said I was going to teach you all how to harvest sweet berries safely, and I forgot. Well, here's how you do it. You just put slabs on top of them. That's it. Uh, so that way you can walk between the sweet berries. Uh, the slabs will make it so you don't actually touch them because you can't go through the slabs, and you can just harvest to your heart's content. Now I've got five pieces of bone meal here and we'll see if this tree actually grows with this five. It sometimes takes a lot but uh, if you put it in a two by two formation here with four saplings right uh, you can... No no it didn't give it to us. All right so what I'm gonna do is just put those back. If you put them in a row like this uh, they will eventually spawn or uh, grow into a, a large tree. Um, what I'm gonna do is actually just break them up. I'm not sure if it'll uh, help the growth process speed up, but uh, let's give it a shot. I remembered about some bones that we had uh, in the in the storage igloo, and <laughs> of course, when I come back out, one of our giant trees has grown. <laughs> so yes, if you grow your uh, spruce in a two by two, you will get large spruce trees. This one is actually extremely small. Um, I'm not going to turn all my bones into uh, bone meal because we can use bones for other things like taming dogs, which is a lot of fun. Let's see if we can get one of these guys to grow. 
There we go, there's another one. Yeah, you see this one's a lot bigger. Well, I cut them all down. Holy cow, it took like two whole days and a ton of axes, and I literally don't have enough in my pockets to pick all of it up. It's just, this is the most overpowered way to, to farm trees. I actually accidentally uh, right clicked on that one, so I stripped the, the bark off of it, but oh. Just so many trees, so much wood. I've gone ahead and replanted them all in a row again. I've put torches down next to them so that way they'll grow overnight. And let's see if we can have them all grow up like this. I usually do it like this with bone meal, so I don't see why they wouldn't or why they didn't before. That's really interesting. But anyways, uh, let's go check out our spoils. 14 stacks and 10 of spruce logs. That's amazing. Now, as a reminder... Every single one of these logs is going to turn into four planks, okay? So right here, we have 40 planks, right? We need two stacks of planks, which is 128, to go from the top of the ocean up to where we want our platform to be. So I'm going to think that this is probably enough wood, but uh, hey, you never know until we actually get out there and we try it. Well, I'm pretty sure I have everything in my pockets for this build. Uh, all the wood, we've got four hoppers. Um, we've got enough wood for more chests if we need it. Uh, I might need another bucket, and I realize we haven't gone over buckets. Um, we'll do that when we're over there because we need a lot of water for this. Um, but yeah, I'm not going to build this whole thing on camera because this is probably one of the most basic farms that you can find out there. I will link in the description a farm that I have used in the past. And we're going to be making essentially the same farm that they have in their video. We're just going to tweak it a little bit to better suit our needs. Now, if there's anything in this farm that we haven't gone over before, I will uh, stop what I'm doing and I will try and go over that section of the farm as much as I can. Things like placing the water and how far you, the mobs need to drop and why, etc, etc. All right. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and get started on this. I'll be with you guys in just a few minutes. And actually, now that we're out here in the middle of the ocean, before we get started, uh, how do we place a block, right? How do we place a block on top of water? Because if I jump out right here, I can't actually place this block here. Um, I kind of just find a place that's sort of in the middle of where we want to be. This looks pretty good. And then what I do is I find the nearest kelp. Now, kelp is something that'll grow in the ocean. And as you can see, I can go ahead and place uh, blocks right on top of the kelp there, which is super fantastic. I'll probably break this down because I do want to have this be planks. But uh, that's how we're going to start this thing. So pro tip for any of you that are wondering, hey, uh, how do I know when I've reached 128 blocks above sea level? Uh, it's two stacks. So if you place a stack down, you can just place another stack down, and that's 128 blocks above sea level, and you're good to go. Another great reason to build this over the ocean is not only because it's easy to find a nice flat place uh, to get down, just jump. If you jump in water from any height, you will survive. The key word there, though, is water. If you accidentally hit a boat or another block, uh, you'll, you, you will certainly die from that height. <laughs> <laughs> so ladders ladders you make out of sticks we went over that already you don't need to place one on the bottom block that you're trying to get up you just have to jump to get onto the ladder if you go forwards uh towards a ladder you will go up if you hold the shift key you will go up and if you hold or the space bar key excuse me you will go up and if you hold the shift key you will stop on the ladder right as you're climbing you can place more ladders now i want this all to be stripped and i completely forgot so while i'm going i'm going to be stripping this wood here <laughs> But uh, what we're going to do is we're going to just climb up this ladder here and, um, yeah, go until we reach the top. All right, here we are on our beautiful platform, and I am using slabs, so that way we can save a little bit of resources here when we build things. Because remember, essentially when you do planks, make planks into slabs, it costs three planks for six slabs, so you're actually getting double the material, more or less, right? Uh, so I am going to make a kill chamber that is accessible uh, 360, right? So in the video, it's only accessible on the front two blocks. I'm going to make it accessible 360. No real reason for that. Really, the only thing that's different here is I have a bunch of chests, and I'm going to be sticking each one of these hoppers into each chest, right? So one hopper per chest, okay? Ladies and gentlemen, while you're making mob farms, put torches down. <laughs> <laughs> so mobs don't spawn 
on your on your platforms. Um, ay vey. So, while it's raining here, I want to talk to you about water, okay? So, we need a lot of water in this in order for this farm to spill mobs down this chamber. So, they drop down here, and then we can swipe a bit at them with our sword, right? Now, what I just did right here is I made an infinite water source, okay? I had two buckets of water, right? And I put one water source block in one corner. And then one water bucket in the other corner, okay? And what that does is it makes infinite water sources. Now, if you watch, I'm going to right-click right here with my bucket. And that picks up water, and it replenishes it. Because we have infinite water there. Why does that work? I don't know. <laughs> it just does. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to take that water, we're going to put it in each corner of our channel, the, uh, the back corner. So that way the water goes ahead and it falls down uh into the edge of these channels here now water will stream eight blocks from where you place it right so where we place it is one and then all the way down eight blocks here and it stops right here so the water doesn't spill over the edge and uh, disrupt the mobs from falling to their almost death. All right, now here's our farm. Now the only thing I have to do is put a roof on it. I took all the torches out, so everything should be light level zero on the inside, right? Uh, and then we should be good to go. I'm gonna use half slabs to create a roof on this, so that way um, mo mobs won't be able to spawn on top of this farm, right? Now, you remember I said uh, bottom half slabs will not allow mobs to spawn on it. The other thing that you can do instead of half, half slabs is you could just put torches on top of blocks that you put on top of the farm, right? So while I'm filling this in, what's with the trapdoors throw? Well, mobs are kind of dumb. Uh, and they don't realize that closed trapdoors, uh, they will fall down if they try to go over them, right? So if a trap door is extended, if it is open, right, in this sort of orientation, you and I can just walk right over that, right? And we see that. Now, a mob has no idea if a trap door is open or closed, and it will just think, oh, I could just walk over this, that's fine. So as long as we put trap doors on opposite sides of this, uh, the, these water channels here, mobs will think to themselves, well, I can just walk over it, it's fine, I'll drop it down into the water. Oh no, I can't jump out because the channel is two blocks tall, and they will just follow that water channel down to their doom. Whew, I got that place cleared out pretty quick, that's great. <laughs> it actually wasn't horribly difficult. Oh, that's right, uh, I can't actually go to sleep, there's uh, monsters nearby. <laughs> but it looks like this is working like a charm. Now I'm going to hit escape options music and sounds and i'm actually going to turn hostile creatures down to like two percent uh because this yeah you can barely hear them now this farm gets really really loud now watch this though almost everything is a one hit kill here now zombies will never uh i don't think they'll ever be a one hit kill um they just have too much natural armor right but, uh, yeah, we are not only getting levels, but we're also getting good materials here as well. Like, we're getting more arrows, bones, uh, gunpowder, which is fantastic. Uh, just, this, these farms are so useful, especially in early game. So, I've been swiping at this guy for a little bit, and as you can see, uh, one just dropped in front of us. Um, a couple of spiders have dropped. Now, spiders will drop, and once they uh, get to a wall where they can climb, they will just start to climb up the wall. Now, there's something in this game called a mob cap. Your world can only spawn 70 hostile mobs in and around you at a moment, right? So these spiders can become a problem. You notice how that one didn't die, right? If you get 70 spiders, you're standing here for a while, right? And you get 70 spiders that have climbed up to the top, um, you will not get any more mobs to spawn. Now, this is a problem. We can fix it in the farm. We actually might in a later date if we need to. Uh, but one of the best fixes for this is, remember how this platform is 128 blocks above sea level? Uh, if you're having a problem with spawns like I seem to be right now, just jump off. All those mobs up there will despawn. Whoa, God, that gives me vertigo every time. And then once you climb back up your mob tower, you should be good with spawns again. 
all the spiders should be gone. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this is where we're going to have to leave the episode today. Unfortunately, I really hope you liked it. Leave me a comment down below what your favorite part of this episode was, all right? Um, next episode, I think what we're going to do is go over enchanting. We're going to show you all the fancy enchantments you can put on your weapons, your armor, uh, which ones you really should be looking for, which ones you probably should steer clear of. And in the episode after that, we might go to the nether. I think it's time. I think it's honestly time to go to the nether. But anyways, folks, follow me on all the things. Uh, Twitter, Twitch, it's all in the description below. Also, uh, leave a like and a subscribe. And uh, let me know what, uh, what future episode we should do down in the comments, all right? Until then, folks, thanks again. Goodbye.